Hi, I'm Matt with Meat Church. Today we're making fajitas on the griddle with a side of street corn. You guys have been asking for more of these easy weeknight meals. This is our go-to Taco Tuesday. There's nothing complicated about this, so get ready. This is not an earth shattering recipe, but this is what I do when I don't have a lot of time and it's something I can do every single week and the family loves it. On my street, there's a Mexican grocery store, Super Garcia. Um, Michoacana is another really popular one that was actually the first one I ever got introduced to when I moved um, to Waxhatchee, even though we don't have one here, you have to go to Ennis. Uh, so I go there and I buy marinated fajita meat. So today we're gonna do beef and chicken Honestly, it can't be beat. Like I have taken raw chicken and tried to marinate like they do. I've bought the stuff to do it and I just can't do it. So for me, it's easy to go in there, buy the meat, and then I just get a little bit of vegetables. Um, I like traditional fajitas and onions and peppers. So that's how we're gonna do it. But I'm gonna make a little side. Um, lots of requests from you guys for more sides. So this is gonna be a street corn-esque side that's obviously very easy. So we've got a, a, an elote recipe on this site. That's not exactly what we're doing. Let's just jump right into this. Today we're cooking on the Traeger Flat Rock Griddle. Uh, we've got medium heat right here in the middle. There's three different zones. I'm low on the outside just because I don't need to burn fuel. I'm not cooking anything else over there right yet. First, we need some fat. So use oil or butter. I got some super soft butter here. I'm just dumping corn right on it. All I'm gonna do is I'm just trying to char this stuff, get some little tasty bits going on it. Um, you can also do this on the cob over the grill. This is super duper easy. Now when I make street corn, I like to season it at the end to build it together. Like if you buy lotes here, anywhere in Texas when you get you know corn in a cup at a gas station that's normally when I add it but I do like to add a little bit of seasoning here something savory you could use our fajita seasoning our seasoned salt I'm gonna do lemon pepper at the end so I'm gonna go light knowing that I'm gonna put lemon pepper on it at the end so I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit of our fajita it's salt pepper garlic uh, onion and a hint of citrus and go light with it it can be salty The time on this is really just to your liking. So you're trying to get, again, those crispy bits. So let's just toss it around. And when we think it looks good, we're gonna pull it off. So this griddle cooks really evenly. Uh, even still, I don't like to cook on the edges if I don't have to. But with my IR gun, I always kind of check to see uh, what's going on. And we're still, you know, 350 on the edge, so we're good. But I try to stay in the middle. This griddle, it cooks really evenly. It has three separate zones, so you can kind of use that to your benefit, depending what you're cooking. If you're trying to keep something warm, or if you're really trying to cook something heavily or hot and fast. It's been cooking about eight or 10 minutes. You can see it's got nice char on it, which is all we were looking for. So I'm gonna pull it off, put it in a bowl, and then grab the meat. So now onto the star of the show, the meat. So what I bought were marinated chicken thighs. You can use breast meat if you want, but you know that thighs are where the flavor is. They're juicier, harder to dry out. So I've taken whole thighs, just kind of scrape the fat off and then cut them into strips. And then I took the marinated beef, which sometimes is skirt, sometimes it's flank. Um, if you're not buying it from Mexican meat market, I love to go to Costco and buy sirloin flap. I cut it into strips against the grain. So with fajitas, you want to cut the meat against the grain. Um, because it makes for a more tender bite ultimately. If you ever had fajitas and they're super chewy, that's because somebody's probably cut with the grain. So we're just gonna dump this on again. We're still at medium heat. I'm gonna go a little oil. You can do butter, I prefer oil for this.
While I'm spreading that out, I'm gonna put down a little bit more over here for the vegetables. Now, if I'm cooking this over a direct fire, I would have left the thighs whole. It's just a preference thing, but it doesn't matter how you do it, to be honest with you. And when you're grilling like this, you know, put whatever you want in it. We cut these onions big, like onion rings. You can cut them into strips if you want, like I've got here with the red and bell peppers. I definitely, for me, I gotta have green peppers, white onions. We usually put a little red in for color, makes it look pretty. I always say you eat with your eyes first. I'm just gonna cook all that down. And whatever's done first will pull off. Chicken's gotta get to 165. The beef, that's a struggle in my house. I'm a medium rare guy, but I swear my entire family likes to burn their chicken for fajitas. I'm sorry, their beef for fajitas. So we'll see how we feel as we're cooking. Now let's get some seasoning going. Obviously I'm going with our Dia de la Fajita on the meat. Full disclosure, some people will do the marinated meat without seasoning. I like to add it. And then I'm going with our gourmet uh, seasoned salt on the vegetables. But season with what you want. So I'm going medium heat on the meat. Generally, somewhere between medium, medium high. So I like 375 or so. But look, with outdoor cooking, I'm not gonna sit here and temp it constantly. You can if you want. Cook it lower, it's gonna take longer. I like to go a little higher uh, because I like to get that char on there. There's flavor in char. I always say a fine line between char and burned and a little bit of char is exactly what I'm looking for. But this is entirely a preference thing um, as long as you cook it to basically the required temperature. It's been around 10 minutes or so I always use a Thermapin instant read thermometer to check, see where I'm at. That's how you nail the desired doneness. We're in like the 140s, which is great for fajita meat. Uh, check on the chicken. That's 160, it needs a little more to go. The thing with thighs, I didn't say this being, it's gotta be at least 165, but it's very difficult to dry these out. So you can take thighs a lot higher if you want, if you wanna get that char on there. But what I'll do at this point is, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the beef. got good char on these they're nice and tender so this is good enough for me all right I'm gonna kill that burner I'm gonna spread this out I'm gonna give this chicken just a couple minutes we're gonna pull it and then it's gonna be time to build the chickens done I'm gonna pull that off I'm gonna scrape the griddle so I can heat up our tortillas All right, let's build the corn. So as I said earlier, we have an elotes recipe on meatchurch.com and a video on this channel. This is just kind of like that. So I'm not really measuring a whole heck of a lot. But what I'm gonna do, get some crema, get some lemon pepper. Woo. I don't talk about our lemon pepper enough. Just season to your liking. A little bit of cotija. You can also put butter in it as well. We cooked it in butter, so I'm not today, but you can. And just mix it up, taste it, adjust it to your liking. It's that simple. So I'll normally have a little taster spoon, taste it, adjust. Nailed it. All right, put the spoon back in it. I always say go light with the things you put in because you can always add more, but you can't take it away. Put a little cilantro on there to make it look pretty. We'll set that aside. 
Now let's get into the fajitas. First, I'm gonna try what we cooked. Let's just go a little piece of chicken, a little piece of the beef. I'm gonna start with the beef. The thing I love about that, it's so marinated and so flavorful before you do anything. It's honestly like super hard to screw up. And now the chicken. God, so good. My wife um, doesn't care for the thighs. She always wants uh, breast meat, but look, I'm making a video out here, so I get to pick my meat for once. Not super good. Now let's make one. These are tortillas made this morning um, at our local HEB. To be honest with you, they're super hard to beat. I'm gonna go a little bit of both. Uh, these are the butter tortillas. Um, I could have gotten them you know, we could have made them. We could have got them at the same Super Garcia, but this is honestly probably like literally the best uh, tortilla ever, in my opinion. So we're just going to load this up. This is where you get to make it how you like it. A bit of cheese. So I like guac and pico. Sometimes crema, not today, just cotija. All right, oh, need a drink. Can't do this without a Mexican Coke. Real cane sugar. Shout out to Yeti for the greatest bottle opener of all time. Also doubles as a weapon or a prison shank. Oh, those are good. Okay, this is a big one. That's how we do it in Texas. I'm about to smash that down. All right, Dolly, let's see how we did. See if I can get a bite of all that. Crazy enough, I ain't mad at it. Super good, super easy. Bought this stuff three blocks from my house. Had dinner made in 30 minutes, including making a side that took 10 minutes prior. Like, that is very, very, very tough to beat. This is going in our griddle playlist on YouTube. If you like what we're doing, please subscribe. Your subscriptions help us bring you uh, these weekly videos. And hey, check out the Traeger Flat Rock. This thing is awesome. We've cooked on it a ton now. It's a lot of fun. Definitely a premium griddle, and I love it. So anyway, see you guys next week. Well, we're here at my barbecue supply shop in downtown Waxahachie. Continuing these wrap-ups, you guys have continued to leave comments on every video saying you like this and hey it gives me a safety net and somewhere to add notes if I forgot something. Um, didn't actually forget anything this time but I do want to address uh, I love making fun of the glove police the the know-it-alls that love to jump in the comments and tell you how you should have done something in your backyard crack me up and while we were filming it occurred to me that I was you know cooking chicken and meat on the same surface um, and we edit videos, we have a bunch of stops and starts, and what you can't see in the final product is that we actually probably had six spatulas on that set. So before anybody says anything about dropping down raw chicken with a spatula and then cooking something else with it later, don't worry. Uh, we have a lot of clean tools throughout the day. But the main thing I wanna bring up in this recipe is just how good it is uh, at our house. Mrs. Meat Church asks me to cook chicken on a very regular basis which goes against uh, my big Texas barbecue heart, but we marinate chicken once or twice a week in different marinades. This one is probably my favorite. Um, you know, last night we had teriyaki, uh, we had some Indian stuff the week before, but in this particular video, it is very tough to beat buying marinated uh, fajita meat from a Mexican meat market. The, you know, it gives you insane flavor, but the tenderness you get out of it from something soaking in a marinade all day, it just can't be beat, whether you're cooking on a griddle or if you're cooking your fajitas over direct flame, however you're doing it, uh, it's definitely a favorite of mine. And I said it in the beginning, this recipe is something we do literally every single week. And uh, you could ask my oldest back there, I'm not lying. Anyway, thanks for watching. See y'all next week.